when you're in it, you're in it till the end. And I can almost guarantee David Dewhurst is not going to drop out, um, nor should he. And frankly, this idea that he can't win this thing in the runoff, I think, is a bogus idea. I think he needs to really evaluate where he's at, look the way where he finished up here uh, on, on Tuesday. Uh, I, I think there's a lot of merit to that, quite frankly, because um, it's going to be a difficult time as the incumbent lieutenant governor to make up that ground. Uh, with Patrick finishing with just over 40 percent of the vote, obviously a strong base coalesced around one candidate there. So, you know, Governor Dewhurst would be well advised, I think, just to sit back, take an objective look at where things really are at today and make a determination if he should move forward or not. It was a, uh, I think, a bad campaign, particularly the last uh, 30 days of the Dewhurst campaign. Uh, I think, frankly, that Patrick has peaked. He is a huge unknown. That 41 percent or whatever that number was that voted for him, they don't know Dan Patrick. And I suspect they're going to get to know him a lot better in the next uh, two and a half months. The key to Dewhurst's victory is to define Dan Patrick for what he is. Everybody knows who David Dewhurst is. They don't know who Dan Patrick is. They got a first blush, particularly people outside the Houston media market. Well, I think it's what I thought all along. I thought Texas voters were ready to turn the page. I think Governor Perry stepped down. Uh, I think they were looking for new faces and new ideas. And uh, the fact that he stayed in complicated uh, people from taking a, a fresh look because he does have a loyal following. and. Uh, you know, I think there's a lot of things that he's done well as lieutenant governor. I think there's a lot of things that people are looking for new faces and looking for new leadership towards. So it's going to be a, a, a difficult road ahead, I think. And he'll have to be very focused and very um, committed in, into running, a, well, you know, what's going to be a, a tough campaign to get people back out on May 27th, I think. I, I don't have any plans to do that at this point in time. Um, I think the voters um, need to look at both candidates, let them run their race if that's what, you know, they want to do and let them define themselves or let them define uh, their, their opponent. But I, I don't see any value right now in doing something like that. I don't know if I'm going to endorse David. Uh, I'm certainly, uh, you know, uh, uh, not going to endorse Dan Patrick. Um, it, we got a little time to take a look at that. I'm going to talk to Todd and see what his feelings are and how he, I'm also going to watch and see what David does in the next uh, uh, week or 10 days, just how aggressively he's going to go after this. And uh, if he's doing what, in my opinion, ought to be done, then I'm going to be uh, involved in supporting David. Endorsement, not endorsement. I mean, we'll see. You know, I'm 67 years old. I could retire. Don't intend to do that. Uh, I'm also going to be spending a lot more time with my kids and my grandkids. You know, I've got 10-year-old twins and uh, uh, need to get re-familiarized with those, uh, uh, those little guys. And also I've got some grandkids. I have a son that's a Marine on active duty. I have a daughter in the Republic of Georgia. Uh, and uh, overseas working uh, with uh, the State Department uh, as a lawyer. Uh, and I'm going to spend some time with those folks because I got X number of quality years left and uh, I want to maybe redirect my focus. What's next for you? You tweeted that you gave up for Lent running for public office. Is it your public service as far as in an official realm over? Well, Easter is a whole new beginning, I think. And so I'll be looking uh, to the future on what the best role that I can serve in. I'm very passionate and have strong convictions about where we need to go as a state. It's been an honor to serve as Commissioner of Agriculture in the State Senate and State House, and even at the local level before that. I've always been focused on common sense solutions, uh, never compromised my conservative convictions that I think reflects the, the mentality of most Texans today. And I'll just try to determine on which the best way forward to go, but I'm gonna be fighting for what's right, fighting for what I believe in, and uh, finding the most appropriate role, what, whatever that might be. And I, uh, I'm not gonna rush into any decisions right now about what the best role may, may be for me to serve.